Hey, hey everybody welcome back haven't seen you in a while but I've been busy building other things like that Fairlane project but getting back 1937 Packard I haven't touched this thing in months years yeah a years so anyways I've been working on the interior today I'm just going to do a quick video about taking off a door panel you guys may think these door panels in these 30s cars are somehow different they're not too different from your modern car. We don't have little plastic Christmas trees, but they're really, really close to what you get in the 60s with the middle, little metal clippy things. But we'll go over it. You guys will see as I rip it apart. Um, the only tools we're actually using today is a punch. I'll explain that as we go. Flathead screwdriver and a hammer. And that will get us everything we need. So let's get into it. All right, guys, so these old cars, if you look really close, like on the flatheads, the older hardware is made to like a tighter tolerance. So when you're working on the old stuff, a modern screwdriver, the chisel tip is often a little too thick. So sometimes you want to rub it on the ground, get a little bit sharper. Then you can get in here and you can actually clean the years of gunk out of there. We'll pull all these. We'll pull these out, and what that does is these just hold in this frame. A lot of these frames you see look like they're wood, but they're not. They're painted metal. Um, there's a lot of hot rod guys that have made an art form of repainting these to make them look like wood. Um, I believe Ken Dig. Some people know that guy. He does it. He does a really good job, and he was taught by one of the older guys that had done it for years and years and years. Oh, come on. And the older you get, the more you need glasses because it's hard to see this stuff. Clean this one out some. One is a pill. So interesting history on this car and if you look at it you can actually see it's been scribbled up here. I got this car from the original family that bought it way back in the day. The neat history about this car is it crossed the Golden Gate Bridge the day it opened. Then it went back across the bridge when they rededicated it. Same family both times. I would love to find a picture, but you know, there was actually a lot of Packards back in the day that went over that bridge. All right. And a lot of them have these weird little trim things. Impossible to find. The only way you're going to find them nowadays is if you find another Packard to get them. But at that rate, this just pulls out. There we go. Easy peasy. The next biggest thing is let's attack the door handle. So there's one screw under here. And of course, if you look at the armrest, it's not substantial in any means. And they fasten oddly. Um, it works. As soon as I take this off, you'll see the way they fasten these to the door and you'll understand. So it has keyways in it. So a set of screws like an 80s or 60s car coming through, screws in the frame, snaps over it, hangs kind of like a shelf. Super interesting. I don't know how prevalent that was in 30s cars, but all the Packards I've torn apart in the 30s use that same connecting way. Okay. Like I said, 
we need a punch. Here comes the weird fun part, often the very frustrating part. If you push the sconches back, you can see the little hole inside. There's a little roll pin in there that hold these on. So you have to tap the little roll pin out. And not always does it come out because the sconch gets in the way of it coming through. Like this one is being a total pill. The thing you have to worry about with these is you have to have somebody else watch because when that roll pin does fire out, it runs away. There we go. Little roll pin. Push your sconch back in. Jiggle it around. Sconch comes out. That's because the roll pin hits it. But these are just light aluminum. So same thing with this guy, same thing with this guy. And once we get those out of the way, I'll cut back and I'll show you the door panel. Okay, so exactly what I said about the roll pin. Have somebody watch. Me and Max both watched it pop out, hit the ground and bounce under the car. So it's probably gone forever. But hey, it was good while it lasted. Okay, so all this stuff is, like I said, it's kind of the same clips that you would find holding the door panel of a 60s car on. There's nothing too terribly special, or I should say too terribly 1930s about it. Except they're old and rusty, and like all the other little clips, they never, ever, ever stay in their thing. So they're like the regular clips that you're used to seeing, just these are stamped sheet metal because of the era. Front doors are usually two pieces, this upper part and this lower part. Rear doors, I've seen them two piece and I've seen them one piece. So it depends on how bad this board material is degrading. Last night when we were doing the other doors, I go, I said to my wife, I said, hey, I wonder if we'll find anything good inside the door because we dropped a couple clips inside the door. In the bottom of the back door over there, we found a report card from the school that the, one of the kids went to. And the report card was from 1939. So that was kind of fun. Um, there you go. Separate piece. Like I said, old age, it just falls apart. So be prepared to catch the clips. Okay, here we go. The doors are the door panels are on in the same manner. The big gotcha about doing the door panels is right in the middle of the door in here, there's two of these clips. So if you get a little overzealous and decide to pull on the door panel, you're going to yank those clips right out of the backer board and you will never, ever get that repaired enough. And you can see the neat stuff about this is, oh look, here it is. Oh my gosh. Well, wait until we get the door panel cleared. So I believe Buck or whatever company this is, in the 20s did stamped steel door frames for Packard and a bunch of other motor companies. 
Although my other doors don't have that stamping in them. So now I'm all curious and jazzed up to see that stamp. And I'm sure there's a few of you that do restoration work on these. And I'm sure there's a few of you guys that are pack owners that know all the history for that. And that can correct me and leave me a, a thing in the comments, which is totally fine. Because I claim to know nothing other than what I learn as I take one of these cars apart. And yes, for the rest of you that are going, why am I not using a regular door clip remover? It's because I don't own one. All right. A few more. We'll be home free. Here we go. Ouchie. These bottom ones are the pain because you can't really get into them. And a lot of the time, if you get lucky, they're so old and rusty they come out with a little tug of their own okay here we go okay if you look down in here you'll see all these have springs on them what I've noticed is the wind wings have double springs but the door crankers and the window cranker have single springs which is Weird, I thought maybe they put two by accident, but the other side had two, this side has two, so I'm sure that's an intentional thing. So right here, you can hear it, is one of the other clips. There we go. So two right here, roughly close to where the armrest was. You can see when they sewed the material, they sewed right through the backer board, which is kind of fun. Okay, here's the cool thing. Let's see the cool thing. All steel bud door. I have not seen that. And it is not on the other doors. All right. Well, guys, thanks for uh, wasting time with me. This is about as good as it gets for this stuff, like I said. Real easy, very close to a 60s car, and really not a big deal. So if you guys go to tackle this yourself, don't be afraid, jump in it, that's how you learn. And we'll see you guys next time.